a small knife joins the clan. Here's your look at the NECA toys predator, Machiko Noguchi. Mankind's two ultimate nightmares come together in Mortal Kombat, and whoever wins, we lose. On the remote planet Ryushi, a small ranching community becomes an unwilling participant in a deadly ritual. Extraterrestrial predators have seeded Ryushi with alien eggs in order to create the ultimate hunt. But what the predators don't know is that an alien queen egg is amongst those sent as a potential hunting stock. And when the predators arrive, the hunters become the hunted amidst a monumental swarm of of aliens, and they may need to turn to the very same humans they regard as little more than potential trophies to give them any hope of survival. Before we get down to the review of Machiko, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. In case you are curious, is this a new release figure? No. This one's been around for a while, but always one that I wanted to add in my collection if I could find it at a good price. And such a thing just ended up happening. I figured instead of just putting her on display like I was going to, I would actually do a review of her. Taking the tape measure, like I said, to the very top of her head, stopping it right there. According to the readouts... Machiko Noguchi stands 6.4 inches in height. Hopefully you can see that. Switching that to centimeters, revealing that the figure stands almost 16 and a half, 16.3 to be exact. Sadly for Machiko, she doesn't come with much in the way of accessories. I know it would probably be hopeful thinking on this humble reviewer's part that she could have come included with a trophy of an alien queen, if you've followed her in the comics. But sadly, no, she doesn't come included with that at all. What she does come included with instead is a laser rifle, which I'm not sure it actually serves as a name. We're just going to go ahead and call it that for the time being. I will say for the age of this figure... The blaster that she comes included with is really good. It's got some nice age and wear and tear to it. It looks like something she's been using for a while. It's got some nice brushing of silver along the top. And overall, I just like the coloring of this particular blue. She only has one available means to hold said rifle, and it's this hand right here. The other hand is closed fisted, so unfortunately you can't do anything with that. But you can go ahead and take the rifle and fit it into Machiko's hand, just like that. The, I will say, like, the handle seems a little bit larger than her hand, but not to the point where you can't get it in there. You can see that she's holding it that way. The other accessory she comes included with, I suppose, probably could be something we could talk about later, but for the time being, a bit of a tease. She does come included with also the Yaucha faceplate, which can fit over top of her head. Actually, in order to do that, it probably will be, for the time being, best served to remove this right now. All you have to do is basically take the plates and the edges on either side here kind of tuck inside Machiko's face. Sort of the hair helps to hold it in place. But unfortunately, though, it does always result in having the head angled down, or always looks like the faceplate is angled down. I've been trying my best to try to bring it up a little bit higher, but in order to bring it up a little bit higher, it seems like it then gets further away from the hair and results in the mask falling off. Again, that's the only accessory she comes included with. Would it be wishful thinking to hope that she could come with a trophy of the Alien Queen? Yeah, absolutely. With her battle and of the Alien Queen, of course, Deshande being killed in the process, sort of then left as a bit of a nod that they used in the original AVP, where, of course, if you remember, the girl had teamed up with the Predator on the end, very similar to what had happened to Machiko in the comics. But we'll go ahead for the time being and just remove the faceplates. We'll go ahead and put that to the side for the time being. And let's get a closer look at the figure. Some of the other things that she has on here, notable things you would expect to see in a Yaucha. She comes included with a plasma cast or shoulder-mounted cannon, though unfortunately this one is extremely loose. I'm going to see if I can maybe add a little bit of floor polish or something to that joint, because without that, you can see it's just flopping back and forth. You may also notice it seems a little on the shiny side. Unfortunately, I did have to add a little bit of glue. The peg, unfortunately, when it came to the cannon, it was turned around the other way. And I thought it was a ball joint, so I tried my best to heat it first with a hairdryer and then twist it. Well, unfortunately, it twisted right off, so I ended up having to glue it. Still doesn't fix the problem of having the actual stem be exceptionally loose. Like I said, I'm going to have to see if I can fit that or tighten that up a little bit. The other thing she comes included with a little control console there on the side of her arm, similar to what you would expect to see on a Predator. And of course, she also has the gauntlet blades that do also retract. You can push those back in just like that. This one right here, this one blade, was exceptionally bent when I took this out of the packaging. 
So I, again, had to rely on a heat, a hair source, a heat dryer, a hair dryer source. And I just ended up heating that blade just enough that I could soften the plastic. And then I just bent it back into place. You didn't see it when I took it out of the packaging, but this blade was literally like just bent up here. It was, it was in poor, poor shape. But overall, like, like I said, all the things you would expect to see on a Yaucha, you see here also a Machiko. I want to show, first of all, the head sculpt here. It does have the branded marking there on the top that Deshande had carved in there. Of course, welcoming her to the Yaucha clan. The head sculpt is overall pretty good. It has a bit of a dated look to it. The figure isn't super old. I'm trying to remember, actually, remind myself I'm doing it right now to tell you guys the release date of this at the end and final looks. But it's a slightly older figure. I feel like in that time per period that Nekatoys probably could re-release this as possibly like an ultimate release. Because I think I would be down for the idea, even though I have this one, of getting a, a Machiko Noguchi ultimate for, figure. And maybe by then, they could also include like a couple of trophies that she could come included with. And a couple of maybe other alien weapons, other predator weapons, other than just the rifle that she comes included with right now. But getting a closer look at the head sculpt, it's not bad. I do feel like there's there's opportunity here to improve upon the head sculpt. It does have a bit of a dated look to it. A little more refining probably could come into play when it comes to maybe re-releasing this figure down the road. As I do certainly feel in the annals of Yaucha clans, Machiko definitely does deserve, I feel, an ultimate release. Similar to what you would also expect with Predator, she does have the dreads featured here on the back. Some decent paint and sculpting overall. I like how the fact it's got what looks to be several layers of hair happening here. Again, the scarring there at the top of her head is raised to the rest of the plastic. So it does give her a, you know, it does stand out when you see it. Kind of in a way it reminds me of Harry Potter as well. I do like the airbrushing that they added to the tops of her eyes, giving her a nice little bit of eye shadow. And of course, they've also colored in the lips there as well. Paint on this, though minimal, is pretty good and cleanly applied. Uh, one of the things, again, with the plasma caster, short of it just being broken, is I do like the fact that they did use this brighter blue. It's a bit extreme, I suppose, but uh, it does add a little bit of necessary color, I feel, where when you're really looking at all the rest of the figure, she has a lot of grays and a lot of airbrushed blues to those grays. But do add like that little bit of bright pop of blue goes, I think, a long way. Sculpting on the plasma caster is done nicely here as well. Adding some much-needed purple, I feel. I don't know if you can see it or not. Tilted slightly to the light. It seems like there's a little bit of an airbrushing of purple added to that. Against, like, like I said, the otherwise mostly blue, if not maybe possibly even green, that they've airbrushed to the surface. I don't know why this reminds me of this. Sectors, the old 80s toy line where they had little insect puppets. This armor kind of reminds me of Sectors. Am I dating myself by saying that? The only thing I would say is, while it's not a terrible-looking head sculpt, familiar I am with Machiko in the comics, I don't feel like she really bears a resemblance to how she looks in the comics. I feel like her face is a little bit more defined. She's a little bit too egg shape, I feel, in this head sculpt. But again, I welcome the idea of getting an ultimate release of Machiko down the road. That would be, I would be so on board that. But decently sculpted overall for the time period of this figure. Again, very familiar things noted here on the typical Yaucha armor, though smaller scaled here. For her, obviously, for her body proportions. Nice detail work that they incorporate into either one of the gauntlets, whether the one with the blade or the one, obviously, there with the little keypad there. The countdown, you would imagine, there on the side. She does sport some gloves with some additional coloring added there of that beige brown color. And she also has elbow pads, too. I mean, even if you are fighting aliens, you'd like to do it at least with comfort. So it's nice to see that she's got some elbow pads. Now, similar to what you would expect to see on Predators, she has sort of a fishnet stocking underneath the armor. Again, you've got some additional armor plating down below here. Really, again, loving this color of green. The one thing I would take away is check boxes. If I would check off positive things I like about this figure, overall, like the head sculpt, like I said, isn't terrible. I probably feel like it could be have been improved a little bit closer to what I'm used to seeing her in the comics. But I will say as a positive, the coloring on this figure is fantastic. And spinning around to the back, you can see all of it there. Some additional purple also added in there I didn't mention already. Definitely couldn't say that there's any issues I would have with paint. Perhaps maybe the pegs located in her knees, for example, aren't clearly the same color as the rest of her, of her legs. It's definitely a more warmer flesh tone. 
but again, it's small. And really, when you're looking at it, you're going to only be looking at from the front here. So it doesn't really bother me too much. Looking at the articulation here on Machiko, her head rotates back and forth. It is extremely limited, though, due to what you probably could imagine is just a whole lot of hair happening and the fact that she's got the plasma caster here on the side. When it comes to really rotating her back and forth, Machiko Noguchi, you really can't do too, too much. You can move the head up and down slightly, and you can also rock it back and forth this way as well. I'm pleasant to see that she does have articulation not only in the upper torso, but also the lower torso as well. Rotate that back and forth, rotate it this way, this way, up and down, and also rock it back and forth. She does have shoulder articulation. Um, the one thing you probably have noticed already, this shoulder here specifically, the way they tabbed it, they've uh, tabbed it actually further down on the bicep. So this sort of serves as just a free-floating piece of plastic. It does do, definitely doesn't limit then when you want to bring her arms out. I don't suspect you're probably wanting to be displaying the figure like this necessarily, but at least if you wanted to, that shoulder piece isn't going to get in the way of things. You can move this forward and back. Uh, she does have a swivel at the bicep. That's the case actually on both sides. And this one also is the same idea. It's pegged further down here, even though it takes up a little bit more real estate space. She has a double hinge on the elbow. And you can rotate this part of her arm, and you can also rotate the hand back and forth. A little harder to kind of get in there because, of course, of the blade. The legs split out. You see also the way that they've added the leg armor to the side of the thigh, but they've overlapped it. So the skirting of the armor actually goes over top of it. So it means when you are moving the legs, you can still comfortably move them and no, no problems whatsoever. See the softer plastic happening there. She has a double hinge on the knee. Uh, she has no articulation on the leg. And then she does have articulation in the foot, back and forth, and a little bit of toe articulation as well. You can see the peg, unfortunately. Plastic uh, being painted over always becomes an issue when it comes to moving any joint that has that painted plastic. Because eventually what will happen, there's no way around it. Anytime you're moving that joint back and forth, the paint is obviously going to flake off and it's already started to happening here on the undersides of her feet. At least it's in a place where you're not going to see it because of the coloring of that, that peg that they used for that hinge joint. Had it been anywhere else on the figure, it would have stood out like a sore thumb, I guess, except for perhaps the elbows. Overall, not a bad looking figure at all. As I said, this was certainly one of those cases where I knew right from day one, like being a big fan of NECA Predator figures, that if I got the chance, if I ever saw the chance of being able to pick up Machiko for myself, this was definitely one of those figures I wanted to add in my collection. Some would probably even say, why would you have picked her up and then opened her out of the packaging? Well, I'm the kind of person that likes to really display my figures out on display and not kept in their plastic prisons. Plus, really, it also gives me the opportunity to display her and show her off here in a display in a review for you guys to also be able to see her as well. Um, the only thing I could probably say, one nitpick to the figure, you probably already see it happening right now, is that she does have some difficulty standing. So I'm sure what I will make will make use of is a display stand from NECA Toys, so at least she isn't going to be falling over. Overall, again, not a bad looking figure, but she is really absent of a lot of necessary accessories. I also feel like the head sculpt probably could be improved upon also. So hopefully down the road, NECA Toys will consider giving us possibly an ultimate release of Machiko Noguchi, where we could have all those extra accessories maybe a better head sculpt, something a little bit closer to what we see in the comics. Now in the Predator films, that first AVP specifically, we sort of had the idea of a female character teaming up with a male Yaucha warrior. Their character, Alexa Woods, did that at the end of the movie, teaming up with a Scar Predator to battle an escaped alien queen. It made good for last that last fight on screen, but I don't think she delivered as well as Machiko did in the comics. Of course, Machiko walked away with a trophy of the alien queen, Hopefully, one day down the road, Machiko will finally make it to the big screen so we can really see what she's capable of doing. Because I feel like Small Knife is a little bit more credible as a character to team up with a Yaucha than Alexa Woods. That's just my own personal opinion. Now, of course, when it comes to figure releases, we don't have a whole lot of Machiko to go around. Specifically for NECA, I think this is the only one we ever got. And this one, I think, is dated back from 2018. So it's it's got some age behind it. Maybe during that time, NECA Toys could consider the idea of giving us a re-release or quote-unquote the ultimate treatment that they've been doing with a lot of their Predator figures as of late. I feel like a strong contender is Machiko. If she's good enough to be part of the Yaucha clan, I feel like she's good enough also to get an ultimate treatment. Where then, if you get that opportunity to put a new figure out, 
she could, yes, get better accessories than what she comes included with, because rifle is fine and good. The face plate that she comes included is great as well. But I think there's an opportunity also to improve the head sculpt. The head sculpt for me is just okay. It's not a bad looking head sculpt, but maybe my big problem is I'm so rooted in the comics of what I think Machiko should look like that I feel like the head sculpt really doesn't line up to that. I also feel like there probably could be a better way for her to actually hold the mask. Right now, it sort of sits in between her hair and her face. I feel like there probably could be a better way around that. Maybe just straight out swapping a brain at one head sculpt to another, where the one head sculpt could have the faceplate over top of it. Just like I said, a work away work around to that. I'm still thrilled for the fact I did pick up Machiko. She does have some problems. I have loose ankles, unfortunately, on this, on this one particular figure. The gauntlet blades were still slightly on a warp side. And of course, I had to glue on that plasma caster. I hate having to use the G word, but I had to glue on the plasma caster simply just because when I twisted it, thinking I had heated it up enough, it still twisted right off. Too thin of a plastic, way too thin, and it was stuck in place. So I had to glue it in place. And as you can see right now, it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. It's flopping back there. So I'm going to see if I can try to tighten up that joint. But NECA Toys, please, 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 if you're doing all these other ultimate releases of other Yaucha Warriors, don't overlook Machiko. You basically already have the foundation of her anyways with this mold. It's simply just a case of re slightly retweaking it and including all the much needed accessories that I feel like this figure didn't have in the first place. What do you guys think of Machiko? Let me know down below in the comment section whether you picked up this figure or not, or based on really just this review and this review alone. Also, if you're new to this channel and enjoying all the content you're seeing here on a regular basis, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and come back to this channel on a regular basis. Not only will we be looking at more Predator reviews, but there's also going to be a whole ton of new NECA reviews lined up and come your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.